Hello AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School, taking a look at a video that still comes within our group of topics 2.2 to 2.4. We're going to look at example 2 from that section, and we're still in the middle of examining the definition of the derivative, the limit definition, two different forms, bouncing back and forth between each form just a little bit. We're going to revisit the original form that you saw that finds the derivative at a point. So if we move to that page of the notes, we already did example one in a previous video. So we're going to look at this example two. And you'll notice that I've actually uh, re-copied and, and pasted that alternate form of the derivative that you saw uh, in the earlier part of this lesson, because that's what's going to be used for this example two. So let's go ahead and read the directions. It says the limits below represent f prime of c for a function f and some number c. What your job is, is to find the f and find that c. So it's kind of working a bit inside out or backwards per se. So I'm going to give you some strategies in order to, to pull this off because some students really find this pretty challenging. And I think it's because they don't see some of the patterns that are emerging. First of all, it's very important that we recognize that the function, the, the, the f of x, is generally housed right here in that formula. However, that function's been evaluated for c. And so that poses a bit of a problem because we can't really see what the original function was. We just know that when it's evaluated, say here in part a, we get the number three. I have a kind of a, have a belief that it's going to be a bit easier to likely find the c value before you find the function value. And let me show you what I mean by that. If we look into the original formula, we notice that after the limit statement, we have f of c plus h. So if we go into our expression here for part a, we see the square root of 9 plus h. So that, that value plus h is very revealing here because that value that we have, this 9 in this case, has got to be our c. And so we can go ahead and commit to that because we know that that's going to be true. Okay, now, what about the f of x? Well, what I like to do is to tell my students that this entire c plus h that you see in this expression ended up replacing what was originally an x, right? So if you look at this 9 plus h right here, that's what's going to be replacing the original x. And then everything around that function is still intact. In, the, in this case, a square root symbol. And so that tells us that the f of x was the square root of 9. I'm sorry, the square root of x. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. And I already wrote that c is 9. I guess I could just leave it like that. I'm just going to rewrite it down here again. And then here's the way that you can double check your answer. Is you look at this 3 right here. I'm going to highlight it in green. Is that 3 a result of taking your function and evaluating it at c? Well, that would be the square root of 9 in this case, right? And of course, that's going to be 3. And let me rephrase that because I messed that up pretty well. Is that function value evaluated at our c, which is 9, going to be this green number 3? And it turns out that it indeed is. Okay, so it's a little tricky. That's why we have three good examples here. Hopefully, you get a little bit more comfortable with each one. So I'm going to box this answer. And then let's move on to part B. Now, part B, and as you'll see in a moment, part C as well, are using the delta x variable instead of the h. Don't let that bother you. In fact, if you want to rewrite this where you use h instead of delta x, you're welcome to do that. 
we can just go right in and change each of these delta x's to an h and everything is all back to normal thing you're going to want to do is try to look at the piece that has a c plus h that's the, the one of the first things that we wanted to do and the best thing that i can find that looks like a c plus h would be this negative 3 plus delta x, or after we changed it, negative 3 plus h. Don't be influenced by the 2 plus out in front. He's not part of your c plus h. You're looking for very specific parentheses in this case, or back in the case of part a, we had parentheses around 9 plus h, right? You can see them now. So in this particular case, then, we see that the value of c has to be negative 3, because we have our c plus our h. Now that you've established what the c is, finding the f of x is a matter of taking anything that you've highlighted in yellow, thinking about that as having been an x that was replaced with the negative 3 plus h, and then anything around that makes up your function. So what do we have around this? We have a 2 plus all of the yellow stuff is x to the third power. So that would be your f of x. Now I'd like to check this to make sure it's right. So to check, you go into your function f and you replace the x with negative 3. And so we would have 2 plus negative 3 cubed, and let's see what that is. 2 plus, well, negative 3 cubed is negative 27, and when I simplify, this becomes negative 25, and lo and behold, that does check with the f of c that we would have had here at the end. Hopefully it's a little bit clearer. You'll get some extra practice, don't worry. Let's take a look at our last one. This one looks oh, looks like a mess, doesn't it? So much going on. So once again, we are going to focus in on parentheses. And if, as I said before, you're very bothered by the delta x, you can go in and we can change all of these delta x's to h's. There's quite a few of them. And then hopefully that draws your attention just a little bit to the parentheses value where you would have a c plus an h. So as we go in, I see parentheses values here and here and here. But the c value doesn't look like a number anymore. It looks like the variable x. And that's okay, that's okay. We're not talking about a specific derivative at a, at a number, we're talking about the general derivative here. So it's perfectly acceptable for this particular phase of the problem if we think of the c as being an x. Then the function f of x would just simply be, well, let me think here. I can do it one of two ways. I could look at all of this stuff, and the tricky part is you have to ask, do you include that minus 7? And the answer to that is yes, you would. All of this stuff makes up the f of what was c plus h, but in this case is x plus h, or x plus delta x. Now, a great way that you can connect this back to the original formula is if you look right here, well, wait a minute, that is the f of x formula. Because if you haven't quite pieced it together, part c isn't so much using this alternate form of the derivative. But if you go to the top of this page, it's using your main formula for the definition of derivative. And I get students that ask this all the time. What's the difference between this blue box and this blue box? The blue box that you saw originally on the first page that I've recopied right here, this is a very specific form. In other words, it's a derivative value at a very specific x. 
say, 9, as in the case of part A, negative 3 in the case of part B, whereas the formula up here is more general. It's not for a specific x value. It's for any x value. And that's why we have an x as part of this answer. c is equal to x. And then your f of x is just simply x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4x minus 7. And it kind of seems silly to check this because you would simply go into this f of x and you would change any x to be an x, which is just going to give you what you'd started with. Okay, so there's your answer for part C. You've got quite a few of these that you're going to be able to practice through the skill builders, and you certainly want to do that because I find that it takes students oh, a couple of more repetitions with this for it to really truly sink in. And of course, we can always take some questions in class. Anyway, I hope this helps a bit, and we'll see you at the next video.